Audio, excuse the flies. Great little trip. We've uh, left the corn. Uh, the uh, that um, homestead was just absolutely incredible. And then we went into uh, Hawker and um, saw um, Jeff Morgan's awesome art display in there. Um, definitely a, a must stop. It was well worth the detour to go and see him. Um, we went across the road from um, Jeff there to uh, the bakery and got an absolute incredible um, chunky steak pie. That was worth the detour in itself too. So uh, we then came back down um, to a, um, a, a tiny little town. Um, it's called Craddock. A couple of little mates here, little uh, rock wallabies of course, making a bit of a showing. Uh, Craddock, we've got a pub stay here. So uh, we're at the back of the pub. Um, over in the corner over here somewhere and uh, we're going to be here for a couple of nights and of course uh, pop in for a, a drink or two so uh, highly recommended and uh, a good spot Craddock of course um, if you're coming from down that way on the road which would be sort of like uh, east direction coming from the east it's the gateway to the Flinders Ranges and of course we're leaving the Flinders Ranges but a uh, good, good spot to come and say g'day to the publican at the Craddock Hotel Tonight, we've had an interesting night. We've uh, arrived at Craddock, this um, <laughs> one pub, few churches. It was meant to be eight people, but we'll get into the pub tonight, uh, tomorrow night and find out what's up. But we couldn't help but notice that when we drove into our overnight accommodation here behind the pub, thank you very much, glass everywhere. But it's not like- It's huge, not sharp. It's not big party glass, it's not sharp, sharp glass. It's just old, ancient, what do you call it? Yeah. It's it's an old rubbish dump of, of, of glass. Yeah, like I found a beautiful piece of purple. Yeah. So Jude collects us a lot of uh, rocks and, and she has been doing a bit of glass and she pops them into a little tumbler. Um, that's not travelling with us this trip, but um, when we get back she's got a little samples to do. Anyway, we read that um, you could go out and find some old fashioned glass that was made with uranium. Yes. Correct? Yes. Now, if you go, did we have that in our um, Kalgoorlie trip when I went back? We might have. Anyway, yes. we'll see if we can find that there, there'll, be, there'll be a link to one of our Kalgoorlie ones with the uranium glass. Hopefully, if I can find it. <laughs> so, for you avid little hunters out there that want to go and give it a try, what do you need? So, you need a blue light. A black light, blue a black light, light yeah. black light, black light. Yeah. And dark conditions. Dark conditions. Go out there and sweep the ground in, in old, um, you know, uh, back in history type dumps and bits and pieces and you can come up with these little samples now show show what they look like during the day well, well daylight it's, um, That's it. pretty raw pretty pretty dirty but at the moment right so now we're going to turn the lights off and I don't know whether this is going to show up but we'll give it a crack eh? here we go all right so we're going to give this a try so Jude's got the glass in her hand she's going to turn the black light on I don't know whether it come up in the camera but some old-fashioned glass really pretty they used to put lead also in glass, but it does the same sort of effect, but not as bright as this. We're pretty new to it, but that's Jude's first find of either yeah uranium or lead glass. Alrighty, so behind me, we've got the Craddock Hotel. It was built back in the uh, the 1880s, back in the time when the, the, far, the farmers were all putting the old crops around in this neck of the woods. And it was one of two pubs in Craddock along with about uh, two or three churches. So this is the only pub that's uh, left surviving at the moment. And um, it's changed from uh, looking after the farmers there. Obviously a lot of them dwindled away during the, uh, the tough times. And now it's uh, an absolute uh, godsend for uh, travelers who are traveling through, want to have a bit of a rest, feeling a bit thirsty or whatever, and uh, some good food, tucker, and accommodation. I think it's home for about 15, 15 beds. Now, and also, when you're uh, travelling around Craddock and you're uh, you're wanting a, a hat, you can't find one your size. Just across the road from the pub, you can find the uh, the big the giant Akubra. Now, I think it's got something to do with this road. It's called the R.M. Williams Way, of which we'll find a little bit more on as we make our way east.
Just giving a little uh, rundown because there's a lot of noise in the uh, the pub there last night. But uh, the Craddock Hotel put on an absolutely fantastic meal. I had a, um, a, a beautiful uh, chicken schnitzel. It was uh, Hawaiian style and it was delicious and I needed a doggy bag. And Jude had a kid, kid's meal um, hamburger and that was huge as well. But uh, very tasty, very good. Now um, we have learnt that uh, in Craddock the population has doubled. Um, it's now 16 people, so it's nice to see that the uh, future is looking good for the Craddock area. Um, we had some wonderful company there with fellow campers. It was very busy with um, a few people taking advantage of the uh, camp out here and, and uh, have a beer and a meal in, at the pub. So it was good to see people uh, patronising um, the, the, the pubs here. Um, and yeah, one of the uh, people that was uh, having dinner there with said that they heard a bit of a legend about a ghost. So uh, we didn't uh, have any encounters, but uh, yeah, put down the comments down below if you, you're here and you've uh, felt any presence of ghosts. <laughs> Not to scare anybody off, it's a lovely spot. All right, so we're going to go moving on um, a bit further down uh, the road to the next stop. So bear with us. Down the, uh, the outskirts of town leading out of Craddock. And uh, I've come across uh, two of three churches that were in uh, Craddock. This one here is a Catholic church, and I think it's the, is it the, no, I won't tell what that one is. Um, and the other church, apparently it was um, disassembled and uh, taken out to a farm or something and used as a shearing station. But uh, there was an interesting report in a uh, newspaper back in the 1940s that said uh, Craddock must be the, uh, the most um, desolate place on earth. That was right, yet one of the most holiest, because out of eight buildings, three of them were churches. <laughs> anyway, there's one old grand one hanging in there, and the other one's, uh, I think the other one's being used as a house maybe. It certainly gets pretty dry out this neck of the woods, as you can see, and we ain't into summer. Excuse my attire, but I've got my old grungies on, mainly because we've had a disaster at the train disaster. Um, we've um, wanted to turn around. I've gone into here and unbeknown, well, I did know there was a good dip in the road, but didn't expect this to happen. So the dip just um, put a bit of pressure on the, uh, the spare wheel holder underneath the van and popped the tire off. So uh, all I see in the back of my rear vision mirror is this tire sitting on the road and a grinding sound, and I'm thinking, I've lost a tire off the trailer or I've lost the tire off the van but <laughs> fortunately for me it's just a spare tire but whew, that was close. Can I spy? <laughs> so this is what it looks like here so we've got, we picked up the spare tire so it's been shot underneath the trailer but you can see the sound under the knee uh, that I heard dragging was the uh, spare tire carrier so now I've got to try and get it all back up there again. Yeah, as we just came around this is where our the entire frame has just um, made contact with the ground. I think this is um, my little tow ball side. And uh, yeah, by the time we got here and the dip came, the tire dropped out. <laughs> oh, the joys of it. Back onto it again. Um, I've got my good clothes on and uh, that was just a, a good little warning to me on, um, I, I was unaware how um, loose the tire was in the back frame of the, uh, the A-Van. It's only just uh, pushed up into a frame and then these, these two little hooks clip in. So if it gets bounced around a little bit um, and those hooks both um, are bounced at the same time, that tire just drops down and it fires out like a missile. So I might get a chain on that. Chain, train, disasters. That's why I came here. Um, we're in Wallaway and there was an accident back in 1901 in Wallaway. 
And uh, from Wiki Camps here, I, I very much like the uh, the design um, of the tiles that were here. It was like, wow, that's um, yeah, pretty striking. So what's happened is that there was uh, two trains, one um, southbound, it was uh, uh, hauling about 107 odd uh, cattle on board. And there was one northbound that was um, carting copper and um, flour, I think. Anyway, the brakes failed on the, uh, the stock one uh, going uh, south and um, they talk about an unlit siding, smashed head on to the northbound train. Uh, there was stock that were died and wounded. They had to get people in to uh, shoot the wounded stock. Yeah, just a mess. And then sadly, um, two, um, there were both the firemen on each train um, passed away. So one was Sam Edgar and the other one was Jack Brody. Um, so yeah, a bit of a sad little spot. Uh, there's a little shout out to a couple of uh, young girls that were nearby. Um, they were uh, Nell and Bridget Can. They ran from a nearby home to give uh, first aid and um, look after them. And they were later rewarded by the uh, South Australian Railway with uh, pocket watches. Yeah. So how neat was that? Um, and yeah, all that really remains of this railway is uh, these little tracks in here. So a bit of a sad one. But it was really nice coming down to this site. Look, you can see the view behind me. It is gorgeous. What a what a, an amazing vista. Anyway, we're well, off to our next destination with tire, spare tire intact.